This will be like a list of my favorite Mega Man games from the original series. I might follow up with the X series. It doesn't depend on the critical reception of that this video. I'm just saying I might do it right after. Who knows? Who cares? Let's just get into this. The first Mega Man game I pl the first Mega Man game in the series was Mega Man One. A lot of people give this game shit, saying it's not that good. And truthfully speaking, it didn't set the standard Mega Man 2 left. I mean, we see stuff like the scoreboard, enemy weaknesses are less organized, and the level design, and some of the abilities you get like that bar that you can stand on that Mega Man shoots out of his buster. Some of those things didn't translate well, and they left the game really broken and exploitable. But, certain features, like one of the boss battles with that Cyclops, that was good. And, I never really felt this game was inferior, I just felt it was different from the rest of the series. Mega Man 2, however, I'm going to go out and say, is a fun, enjoyable game. I've played this game on numerous consoles, I even played it on my mom's sidekick phone. And that's probably my favorite version, too, even though it was clearly inferior in many ways. Yet, it's overrated. I didn't consider it the best Mega Man game. And I will personally call Fringe Elements out on this bullshit. Because she seems to make it up that this game is the best of the series. It's not. It's... Like, some things about, like, the Wily levels, especially the final Wily confrontation where he turns into a trippy alien, and the level designs. I love the level designs. I can certainly see why this set an interesting precedence over the series, a uh, standard that still exists to this day. It's aged very well as an age of dime. I don't feel awkward playing it. Everything about it is top-notch, yet it's overrated. Never thought it was my favorite one. Next is Mega Man 3, and for you neckbeards out there, you probably will say this is the best of the original NES trilogy. I think it's better than Mega Man 2. I enjoy the soundtrack to certain levels, especially Snake Man's stage, and I think it's one of the first Mega Man games I actually beat. It was really good. There's no denying that. The Proto Man boss battles, the fact that after you beat the first original eight stages, you go through four of them with special boss battles added to them, and then you fight in the Wily stages, that added some extra dimension to the series, which is much needed, and hasn't been done since. Also, this one added some extra precedence, and it could also be considered a standard bearer for the Mega Man series. Mega Man 4? On the other hand, set one of the nicer standards in the series, yet, since this is the fourth game in the NES series, and you would call it part of the latter NES trilogy, people were kind of getting sick of the same old, same old. The menus started getting more elaborate, and instead of it just being this quick blue screen that's fast and easy, it's an elaborate one where you get, like, a full menu, not just a fast one, where there's a bit of a pause, There's it's slow, there's a lot of stuff everywhere, and you have to see it for to understand it. And there's the introduction of the charge shot, not as good as the later charge shots, where it was less broken. Here, 
the introduction of the charge shot was cool because I always thought the charge shot belonged in the Mega Man game. I can't imagine playing Mega Man X without the charge shot. I can't imagine playing half these games without the charge shot. I felt awkward playing the first three Mega Man games of the original NES trilogy because it didn't include this feature. And a couple of things in this game were introduced that stayed and I'm comfortable with. One of the things I'm not comfortable with is that in the latter trilogy, you have the fake-out villains. Like, here you're, you have Dr. Kane. And Dr. Kane sucks. He really does. He's convincing because he's the first guy. I'm guessing if you're playing this, you wouldn't expect that. Surprise, surprise, it's Wily that's the real guy. And so you get that fake-out tower thing where you go through one tower and then you go to another. It's all good and dandy, but this got old really quickly. And I don't care about a Dr. Kane. Some tyrannical douchebag. Mega Man 5. This one perfected the charge shot. And it was actually the first original Mega Man game that I played. Because at the time I bought the anniversary collection for the GameCube, uh, oh, PS2 actually, in 2004. I got the GameCube one two years later. And I expected that this was going to be Mega Man X. Because I didn't know there was an original Mega Man, even when he was mentioned in the commercials. I always thought that Mega Man was supposed to have the ruby on his head. And he was supposed to kick on walls. And his friend was Zero. Not Proto Man. This game was the first one I played because the first Mega Man X game I played or saw vicariously was Mega Man X5. And I was surprised, yet I was allured. I mean, this is an underrated gem because it has stuff like Gravity Man. Gravity Man stage is the first stage I played. And it was awesome. I loved the vehicle stage. At best water level ever. And... The idea that I could face Proto Man. That he was the bad guy. That was cool. Because I knew about Proto Man from the Battle Network. Television show on Kids WB. I thought, Porter Man, he's a ripoff of Zero. No, I was wrong. I was wrong, and I will admit that as a nine year old ignorant kid, but this was cool. I was so pissed when you actually faced off against Porter Man, and it turned out to be a fake, and the whole way this played out sucked. Mega Man 6. This was the game that I was. The last part of the NES trilogy, I actually watched my dad vicariously... My dad was vicariously seeing me play this game a lot. It was the best. You had the rush armor transformations, you had three of them actually. But the fact that the fake out villain here was... Another old guy with shaggy hair. That one kind of killed it. Also, stuff like Tomahawk Man and like Night Man or Centaur Man or Rose Man or like all these like new mans and the ice level. They were running out of ideas and it was showing hard. This game I do have memories playing yet. It was getting kind of old NES shit. By Mega Man 7, they found a new way to make us enjoy the series. And this was a lot of people's favorites, too. It certainly was mine, because you had all these secret items to find. You had Bass as a real rival this time. And in general, you had a break from the NES shit. 
like this introduced a f more fun storyline. The ending is memorable as hell. There's Mega Man actually breaking the law of robotics. And the one thing I do dislike about this game is that the controls suck. When you jump, it just isn't the same kind of jump as usual. Usually, the jumping is perfect. The controls work great. There's nothing wrong with them. Here, there's a bit of a delay, and it feels like Mega Man is stuck on a jelly-stained floor. There's something heavy about Mega Man, even though he still jumps like he's on the moon. It's hard to explain. Again, I'm just putting that out there. And that kind of crippled up this game for me. But in that, it's my favorite. Mega Man 8 is the only one in the original series that I didn't complete. And it was because of one of the first two levels of the vehicle shit. I couldn't get past that. But, yeah, Wiley's Castle and that bullshit. Other than that, this was... This came had potential with its first four stages, but after the fight with Dio, this game kind of like, it, it was an obvious step back. Let's just put it that way. Giving Mega Man a voice, a girly one at that, and really dumbing down his character. And all these little things. It wasn't a step in the right direction, but it is what it is, and I didn't hate this game. I just couldn't deal with that damn Wily Castle thing. Otherwise, I would have beaten it back then, but there you go. That's my thoughts on the original eight Mega Man games. I have nine, had it since 2008, didn't successfully beat it, it's hard, it's cheap, it's trial and error, that's what it is, like all the other games were difficult, probably even more difficult, but they were fair, this one just felt broken, you know, kind of like being in a single family, single parent family, single mom especially. But this is Mr. Wonka 7. I'm about to get to the X series later on. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm going to do plenty more to today.